Hey, my name's Sophia. Last year, I changed my status to MS and added a wedding band to my collection of courtroom victories. Slinging arguments before a judge is my zone, but I never thought I'd need a defense strategy for family dinners. Let me explain. My husband, Billy, is a mama's boy, and I get why. Mrs. Jerry, his mom, is the queen bee of their hive. She did the single mom hustle, raising two kids on her own. Mad props for that. Then there's his sister, Lauren. She thinks she's the center of the universe. I remember the first time I walked into their place. Billy had his arm around me like I was a trophy. The living room was like a shrine, with photos of Billy and Lauren everywhere. It felt cozy, but also like I was stepping onto a movie set where they'd been playing house for years. Suddenly, I was the unexpected guest. Mrs. Jerry greeted me with a tight-lipped smile, the kind that says, I'm smiling because I have to, but I'd rather be scrubbing the bathroom grout with your toothbrush. She wore one of those floral dresses that screamed, I'm the matriarch. Sophia, dear, Billy's told us so much about you, she said, sizing me up like a car she's not sure she wants to buy. Yeah, I've been looking forward to meeting the famous Mrs. Jerry. Billy's mom has done nothing but sing your praises, I said, trying to warm up the room. Oh, how sweet, Lauren chimed in. She'd been eyeing me like a hawk since I walked in. Tell us, Sophia, how's the lawyer life? I picture you in court like on TV, making bank. So, how much do you actually make? I almost choked. Who asks that right away? I laughed because what else could I do? Ah, you know, trade secret and all that. I shot back without missing a beat. Mrs. Jerry picked up the conversation like it was a relay race. But surely you can give us a ballpark figure for family. Billy shot me a look that said, Please don't be mad, but I kept my cool. If I had a dollar for every time someone asked me that, I have enough to change the subject. I tried to smile in a friendly way. Mrs. Jerry snorted. Yeah, she snorted. Well, it's no secret what a teacher earns, right, Billy? She asked. Billy sighed. Mom, let's not do this now. Right, right, she said, waving her hand like she was dismissing a servant. Anyway, you'll be like family now. Sharing is caring and all that. I glanced at Billy. He had his help me face on. I knew then I wasn't just marrying Billy. I was joining some kind of domestic cold war. A couple of weeks later, I was standing in our kitchen, wearing an apron and cooking Mrs. Jerry's famous chili recipe. Mrs. Jerry and Lauren had this habit of dropping by unannounced like they forgot it wasn't their house. Your chili needs more heat, Mrs. Jerry said, poking at the ladle, and less salt. Watch your husband's blood pressure. Got it? I replied, but inside I was rolling my eyes so hard I could see my brain. Lauren was there too, leaning back on a stool like she was royalty. You see this spot, Sophia. Cleanliness is next to godliness, isn't it, Mom? Lauren said. Mrs. Jerry nodded like it was the gospel, and Lauren was mentally high-fiving herself. Funny, I cleaned this place this morning, I said, wiping the spot off the counter. Must have missed that one. Billy was in the other room, clueless, probably deep in some video game or sports stats. I decided it was time to fill him in on the home invasions. I poked my head in where he was slouched on the couch. Hey, you got a sec. What's up, babe? Billy flicked his eyes up for a moment, afraid he might miss a crucial play. Your mom and Lauren, they come in, take over, and nitpick everything I do. It's like they're looking for stuff to complain about, I said. Ah, oh, Sophia, they mean well? You know they're just. Billy scratched his head. I'll talk to them. They'll chill out. Back in the kitchen, it felt like the final round of a cook-off where I was the only contestant and the judges were out for blood. So, Sophia, when's dinner? Billy must be starving. Lauren said, glancing at me like I was the help. Whenever the chili decides it's ready, I replied. I respond, but I keep my voice light. It's a tricky situation. Dinner lands on the table, and I scan their faces. Mrs. Jerry stirs her food around, inspecting every bean like it holds the secret to the universe. 
bit different from how I make it, Mrs. Jerry finally says. That's code for nice try, but you're no match for me. Billy dives in though, bless him. Babe, this is awesome, right, Ma? Lauren mutters, sure, and Mrs. Jerry just shrugs like she's agreeing with the worst food critic. After they leave, Billy is slapping his belly saying it's all good. I watch the door shut behind them, feeling tiny like I'm losing at a game I didn't sign up to play. The next time they pop over, it's the same old tune, like nothing changed. I must have been dreaming to think a few words from Billy might turn the tide. Still, I asked him to talk to his mother about boundaries. I thought getting married was the hard part. Fitting into Billy's family is the real challenge. They've got their own idea of family, and I'm not in it yet. If this is what married life is like, count me out of the honeymoon phase. It was one of those days where the clock seemed to tick slower than syrup drips from a bottle. That's when my phone decided to ring. Glancing at the caller ID, my heart sank. It was Mrs. Jerry again. Sophia, her voice was stern, and it did nothing for my headache. You think you can just snatch Billy away from us, huh? Her words stung like vinegar on a paper cut. I glanced over at Billy, hoping he'd at least flinch at his mother's tone. Nothing. He's glued to the TV screen, a statue with a heartbeat. Mrs. Jerry, it's not like that. We're just trying to set up some boundaries, I said, my voice thin. Boundaries, she fumed. That's just a fancy word for shutting us out. You can't do that to us, to me. He's my son. I blinked back frustration. Billy was still silent, looking like someone shrug his spine in the wash. Listen, it's normal for married folks to want their own space. I tried to keep the edge out of my tone. Space. He's never needed space before you came, she retorted sharply. Each word chipped away at my patience. That's when Billy decided to speak up, but not to back me up. No, Mom, everything's okay. Sophie is not, um, she's not being unreasonable, I guess, he said, but his voice was like wet cardboard. Billy, I just can't believe this. First, Lauren tells me Sophia is making a fuss over our visits, and now this. Mrs. Jerry sounded hurt, and Billy jumped on that. Lauren said that. Billy turned to me, eyebrows raised, as if I was the one causing trouble. Yeah, she did, and I think she's right. Family is family, Billy. You can't just turn your back on us, she pressed harder, knowing she was pulling him in. I saw my husband, the man I loved, deflate like a balloon three days after a party. The call ended with promises of another family meeting that felt more like a summit to discuss the terms of my surrender. After the call, it was as if nothing had happened. Billy settled back on the couch, resuming his championship in channel surfing. Mrs. Jerry continued her visits, each one a master class in thinly veiled jabs. And Lauren. She might as well have been a puppet master, always getting Billy's ear whenever she pleased. When word got back to me that Lauren was bad-mouthing me all over town, my blood boiled for a second, but I didn't let it get the best of me. I knew I had to handle this the right way. I waited for the right moment to deal with Lauren directly, and that moment came sooner than I thought. I found Lauren at the market on a Sunday morning, filling her basket with groceries. She didn't see me at first, but I walked right up to her, steady and strong. Lauren, I said. She looked up and rolled her eyes. What do you want, Sophia? We need to talk. It's about the stories you've been spreading. She snorted loudly, a smirk spreading across her face. Stories. I don't know what you're talking about. The rumors, Lauren. About me. Teresa's bossy. Teresa's this and that. Cut it out. She laughed, tossing an apple up and down in her hand. And what are you going to do if I don't? You think you can boss me around? I kept my cool. Listen, spreading lies isn't just mean, it's slander, and I won't stand for it. Lauren laughed again, louder this time. You're going to sue me. Get real, Sophia. You aren't got the stomach for that. People's reputations are at stake. I'm serious, Lauren. Keep it up and yes, I will take legal action if I need to. The arrogance just poured off her as she leaned in close. 
You're in way over your head, little Miss City Lawyer. Going to take me to court. This isn't a joke, Lauren. I'm giving you a chance to stop this nonsense before it gets serious. She shoved her face closer to mine, a challenge plain in her expression. Bring it on, Sophia. Do your worst. With that, she spun on her heel, almost knocking over a display of canned beans, and left me standing there. Her laughter echoed through the aisle long after she was gone. I walked back home slower than usual, thinking everything over. Later that day, when my husband came back, I told him what happened. He was in the middle of taking his boots off, and he froze, one boot off, the other still on. You did what now? he asked. I told Lauren off. I threatened her with legal action if she doesn't stop spreading rumors. His face went red, then white. You couldn't just let it go. Why did you have to stir the pot, Sophia? I straightened up, because it's not right and I won't be walked over, not by her, not by anyone. We were silent for a while, both lost in our thoughts. It was clear this was more than a little family squabble. It was a line drawn in the sand, and I had to stand my ground. He just stood there with that same lost puppy look that's becoming permanent on his face. I threw myself onto the couch, fuming. The gossip might calm down for now, but Lauren is the kind of weed that keeps sprouting up. No telling when she'll start yapping again. And Billy? God knows if he'll ever find the guts to stand up to them. Right now, I just need to cool off and figure out my next move in this messy game they're all too eager to play. The whole mess with Lauren had me weighing my options like a pros and cons list in my head. I signed up for a life with Billy not a daily soap opera with his family. And with things going from bad to worse, the word divorce started rattling around in my brain like loose change in a dryer. Then, as if on cue, Mrs. Cherry, the town's self-appointed gossip queen and Lauren's godmother, called me up. Sophia, dear, she chirped like a bird that spotted a worm. We're throwing a little party for Lauren's engagement. It's happening at Giuseppina's next week. We'd love to see you there. The tone of her voice was all fake niceness, the kind that practically screams, I dare you to show up. After hanging up, I stared at the silent phone, thinking how this invite smelled like a setup. Billy was already on edge, and now this. I couldn't help but blurt out to him, guess who's got plans for us next week? He was sitting at the kitchen table, his forehead creased like he was trying to iron out a thought. Who's scheming now? Your sister's engagement party, I said. I say it straight out. We're invited, courtesy of Mrs. Jerry. Billy's face goes a shade paler, the crease deepening. Oh hell. Yeah, oh hell sounds about right. So what's the plan here, Billy? We going to roll over and play nice or what? He's quiet for too long and I'm not having it. Come on, spit it out. Billy finally looks up his eyes serious. Sophia, it's family. I think we should go. I cross my arms, feeling the heat rise up my neck, and let Lauren have a field day. I'm not their punching bag. He throws his hands up, a bit too dramatically. What do you want me to say? That's my sister, Sophia. I lean in, my hands flat on the table. And I'm your wife. Does that not count for much these days? The word divorce is right there on the tip of my tongue, but I bite it back hard. Billy runs his hand through his hair, making it stand up like he's just had an electric shock. Of course it counts. Look, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here. I'm a heartbeat away from losing my cool. Well, guess what, sweetheart, so am I. I married you, not your constant need to please your family at my expense. Billy stands up walks over, and takes my hands. They felt rough, all work and worry. Sophia, I love you. I do, and I hate that it's come to this. Let's not go to the party. You and me, we're a team, right? It struck me then that this was the first time in a long while he picked me over them without flinching. It felt like finding an oasis in the middle of the desert. That night, the thought of divorce quietly tucked itself away. Not gone, but sleeping like a dog with one eye always open. But it was enough for me to catch my breath, 
to maybe believe that we could find some solid ground again. Giuseppina's was hopping when we showed up, walls throbbing with too loud laughter and clinking glasses. I spotted Mrs. Jerry right away, sitting Queen Bee style at the biggest table with that I rule the world look. There was Billy's sister Lauren, all grins like she won the lottery, and her guy Andrew, a deer in headlights type trying to smile. His folks were with them too, stiff and awkward like they wandered into the wrong movie theater. Mrs. Jerry zeroed in on me the second we stepped in. Sophia, she oozed, like I was a six-year-old not playing nice. You'll be taking care of the bill tonight, right? To show you're one of us. I nearly spit out my drink. What? Why me? The table's all ears now, and the air's thick with that, oh, this is going to be good vibe. Mrs. Jerry stretches her smile. Tradition, sweetheart. The newest family member always shows their commitment. My jaw clamps shut so fast I'm surprised I don't chip a tooth. Commitment. That sounds a whole lot like a shakedown. Everyone's perked up like they're hearing a whistle. And there she goes, Mrs. Jerry puffing up like I slapped her. Excuse me. That's uncalled for. Billy leans in, his voice barely more than a whisper. Just do it, Sophia. It's not a big deal. A big deal. I whisper back, my voice turning to a snarl. No thanks, I aren't no one's piggy bank. He's hissing now, real quiet but clear. Pay the damn bill, Sophia, or we're through. I mean it. My laugh is as sharp as a snapped wire. You're not serious. He's all stone face and tight mouth. You think I'm playing. I stare him down. Divorce over this? He's all. Family first, Sophia. I'm shaking my head. And where do I fit, huh? It's shout-out time, and even Andrew and his parents are watching, their faces screaming, what the hell's going on? I push back my chair and stand, letting them all hear me. No, I aren't doing this dance, I say, my voice like a hammer on steel. There's shock on their faces, some whispering, some wide-eyed. Billy's going red, white, red, like a stoplight losing its mind. Mrs. Jerry looks like she might choke. I walk out into the night. It's black and cool and smells like freedom. I hear the door slam behind me. My heart's racing, but it's Billy who threw the divorce word, not me. The bar was nothing special, just another hole in the wall with dim lights and the smell of old beer. I had barely settled with a glass of something strong when my phone rang. It was Billy and for a moment I considered not answering but I did. Sophia, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say divorce. Billy's voice was rushed and apologetic. Before I could even think of a response, Lauren's voice blasted through. You've ruined my engagement dinner. You selfish, the phone must have changed hands so fast my head spun. I could practically hear the venom in her voice. In the background, I heard Mrs. Jerry loud and clear. Why should I pay? He's your son. You pay the bill. I won't have my daughter marrying into a family that doesn't know how to treat people. The chaos from Giuseppina's was spilling through the foam like a bad sitcom without a laugh track. People were arguing, and it seemed like nobody was keen on picking up the tab. I pushed away from the bar, my anger giving me a clear, calm voice. Lauren, chill out. Your mom's the one making a scene, not me. Sophia, hang up. Billy said, his voice a faint whisper behind his sister's ranting. No, she needs to, Lauren kept going, but I wasn't about to play this game. I ended the call. The screen showed a string of missed calls and texts that I swiped away. They were probably all about the same thing. Guilt and blame, the usual. I looked at the bartender. Another one, please, he nodded, pouring another shot without a word. Silence settled around me, except for the low murmur from the regulars scattered around. I tried to collect my thoughts. My phone screen lit up again, showing Billy's name. The guy just didn't know when to quit. I flipped the phone face down, letting it go to voicemail. It was futile to talk when the whole crew was going off the rails back there. A few drinks later, the door to the bar creaked open, and in came a chill gust of evening air, but I didn't look up. It didn't matter who was coming and going. 
I thought about what had just happened and what it all meant. Here I was, sitting in a bar because my in-laws decided I was the bank, and instead of understanding, my supposed partner turned it into an ultimatum. I finally picked up my phone and typed out a text. Billy, we're done. Lauren can think what she wants, and your mom can deal with her own damn bills. I won't be part of this circus anymore. Just as I hit send, the phone rang again. This time, I shut it off. I was tired of the arguing, the demands, and above all, tired of feeling like I was alone in a partnership that was supposed to have my back. When the room finally stopped spitting and my head felt a little clearer, I knew what had to happen next. It was time to start looking forward, even if I had to do it on my own. No more games, no more being the scapegoat for a family that couldn't see past their own drama. I walked out of the bar, leaving the noise and the night behind. The air was getting colder, and the city lights were starting to blur into the coming darkness. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in a long while, it was mine to take. What a mess that last evening was. The whole thing at the restaurant blew up bigger than anyone thought. The groom had had it up to here with the drama and ditched the engagement right then and there. You should have seen Lauren's face when he dropped that bomb. I can't believe it. No one saw it coming, least of all her. Then the mother-in-law lost it, screaming like a banshee. She was causing such a scene that the groom's family looked ready to call 911. She was yelling about disrespect and no consideration. It was pure chaos, like one of those trashy daytime shows where chairs start flying. Meanwhile, I was done. I filed for divorce and cut off all contact. I ignored Billy's calls and deleted his messages. The last I heard, he, his sister, and my former mother-in-law from hell are all holed up in the same house, probably driving each other crazy. As for me, it felt like I finally stopped holding my breath after years underwater. Life's simpler now, but that evening is still the talk whenever I bump into people from the old circle. It gets old, you know. So, here's the update for anyone who still cares. I'm living my best, most peaceful life. I'm sitting in my usual spot at the cafe down the street from my place, the one where the coffee is strong, and no one asks too many questions. The barista gives me a nod. The usual? He asks, like he's asking if the sky is up. Yep, I say. That's what my days are like now, no fluff or meddling in laws. Work's a breeze when it's just that work. Free time is mine to enjoy without guilt trips or obligations. I curl up on my couch, the one piece of furniture that's followed me through all the moves. The springs are shot to hell, but it fits my back just right. I flip on the TV, watching some crime show where they catch the bad guys by minute 30. The peace is what gets me, not eerie or lonely, just peace. Breathe in, breathe out. No more walking on eggshells or cleaning up family feuds. This is living. When I hit the pillow each night, it's with a sense of accomplishment. No pat on the back needed. I know my worth, and finally, I'm living like it. I'm eating my lunch when the phone dings a message from a number I don't know. Probably Billy using someone else's phone to reach out. I delete it without reading. Not today, Satan. Not ever. They used to say, you'll regret this. But here I am, not a single regret in sight. The day drags out cozy and fine, ending with a glass of something smooth and a book I've been meaning to read. The heroine's tough but fair, reminds me of someone I know.